So what we want to do is we want to copy this. We're going to keep the same LUN number. And we'll go ahead and activate the ta uh, target for that LUN. And you can get a little bit more information that is designated as source and the size is 10 gig. Now let's go to our Power Vault 2. And we'll go to Configuration, iSCSI Target Manager, and then the targets. Now here we want to keep the same target name as your source server. So if we go to our source, and if you forget, all you have to do is come down to the targets and then go to target zero. Scroll down, and here you can just copy and paste it here. Now we go to Power Vault 2. And now we've duplicated the same name. This ensures when it fails over it that it is replicating properly with the auto failover, though it denotes it. And it knows that it's a destination mirror. So it understands immediately that right now the way we're setting it up, it's really anticipating that you have the knowledge and know that you've got to keep the same SCSI ID. So now let's go back to our source and copy that SCSI ID. And we know that it is LUN0. And let's paste that right into our secondary system, LUN0, and enable. Now we're completed with that task. Let's look at our status of how the replication is completed. So again, we go back to status, we go to tasks, and we find that it's consistent and it's ready. So once we've completed with the iSCSI target manager, we can now go to our setup network. And in setup network, we will go to our ETH0. And we want to enter the virtual IP address. This IP address must be established. We also need auxiliary as well. So for every Ethernet port that you have, you want to make sure that the auxiliary connection is enabled. The reason being is we're going to be setting up a ping node and if the ping node fails at the auxiliary connection is another way to keep the relationship to the heartbeat. So if you remember in the beginning that we want to have everything on a different subnet or network for the ETH0, ETH1 and also for the virtual IP address. So our VMware server is going to be on a 192.168.0.1 um, X network, so we're going to make this 100. 255.255.255.0 and a broadcast of 192.168.0.255. Now we must replicate this same IP address to the destination server as well. And again, we need to add our auxiliary connection port as well. And keep in mind, if you get lost on some of these uh, what to do here, you can click on the question mark and each of these will bring on an online detailed description for that function. Instead of just looking up for a manual, it's right there. So let's go to our Power Vault 2 and let's set the, we go into network so we can set up our virtual IP address. And we'll select ETH1. And again, we're going to set to 192 to 100. And this is going to be our subnet. And of course, our broadcast. And then we're going to have to set our auxiliary. And uh, while we're here on the secondary, let's go ahead and enter this for the auxiliary. 
connection. So now we want to be able to go to our iSCSI failover. So we're going to go to the Power Vault 1, go to the underneath the interfaces, you'll see iSCSI failover. And here we're going to enable the iSCSI failover function. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to enter this as the primary node and set the secondary node's IP address as the 192.168.10.223. Uh, what comes next is the ping node. And what's important about the ping node is this assists into the heartbeat of the connection between the primary and secondary. In this case, we're going to enter the server that we're on, but you, I recommend using a firewall, a router, um, a switch, as those systems usually have a, a better uptime due to because a lot of engineers like to place uh, high powered or longer lasting UPSs. Um, usually PCs or systems, they don't, unless it's a high end server, they'll have a uh, uptime with their generator. So you want to put a good uh, ping node IP address in there. You can add another IP address, just use the semicolon and just continue the IP address that you want to use that add on. Additionally, if you click on the question mark again, uh, you get greater information of basically what to set for warrant time, dead times, and, and all this is in your advanced uh, mode settings here, but typically we have the defaults are set for its optimum values. Uh, but in this case, that's something you can learn and test later for your environment. Okay, so right now we're ready to go ahead and hit apply for our primary. And let's go to our secondary system. So we'll go to Power Vault 2, enable the iSCSI failover functionality. And here we are going to set the secondary node for the primary node IP address of the 10.22 network. There we go. Now let's go back to the primary on Power Vault 1 and now we're going to verify a few things. The ping node came out fine um, and there's a lot of things that are happening right now so it's going to take a while. They're communicating, they're negotiating, they're verifying the logical volumes, uh, they're going to start working on the virtual IP address, they're going to say okay I, I, I have the heartbeat, I have the auxiliary, are we working? And so at this point, uh, we're pretty much ready to go, and it may take a few minutes to sync up. So we'll take this one, and again, if you have multiple uh, volumes that you want to replicate, keep in mind if what we're going to do is add this one in, but let's say at a later date, you would like to add others in, and you would see them listed here. In order to add them on this version, uh, we are going to have the capabilities where you don't have to stop the service, but in this case with this version and probably the next one, you will just have to stop the service for both the primary and secondary. Then add your uh, targets into the failover task area. So right now this process is completing. Uh, let's give it a few seconds or two to go ahead and let it run. And then on the bottom, you're going to see right here, if you scroll down, we want to be able to start the communication of the two routes. So let's click on our start button. At this point in time, the configuration of both nodes is in progress. So until this denotes that uh, it is configured, in so now we can get greater detail of our status of our auto failover. We can just scroll up to the top here, and here you're going to see that the global status service is running. Status is okay. Uh, our Power Vault 1 is primary and active. The ping node is verified. The communications for the ETH 0 and ETH 1 are completed okay. And here again, we have more information that the LV0 is consistent with the primary and secondary system. And if we look at the Power Vault 2 system, you'll see also the same status. Now let's verify that the virtual IP address is actually uh, working for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to ping that. We're going to ping 192.168.10, uh, I think it's 0.100. And there we go. So that verifies that our virtual IP address is working that we've set up. So now let's go to the VMware server down to the bottom. And in the VMware ESX 4.0, uh, we'll select this uh, server system right here for the ESX 190. We'll go to configuration. 
in our storage adapters. And we'll see the iSCSI um, software adapter that we're going to use. Enter the IP address of our virtual IP address, which is going to be the 192.168.0.100. Of course, it's going to do a rescan. At this point, we should see our 10 gigabit, uh, which comes out to a 9.97 iSCSI um, uh, auto failover volume with the power vault. And now, from this point, we'll go to the storage, and we're going to add our storage for the block device for a disk LUN.